I had never done an approach before. I didn't know what a cold approach was. I didn't know anything about pickup. I didn't even know pickup existed. All I know was that I watched a video on Brian and he was talking about being friend zone. And I think that was the one thing that stood out to me. I was like, I know what that is. I know what that, <laughs> I know, I know what that is really well. Um, I, know I don't like that. And um, they were talking about the nice guy and, and all these qualities that the nice guy has and everything that he was saying was just like, that's me, that's me, that's me. And some of you guys have read the book, Enormous Nice Guy in here, right? Most of you guys have? It's the same thing. It felt like an autobiography for me, too. I read it, and I was just, like, super triggered reading it. And I couldn't read through certain chapters because I was like, oh, this is way too deep. All right, so um, I had, uh, had seen the video. I was literally at work one day, working at the library, walk, walking down the aisles, shelving books, looking at this video. And I was like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to meet this guy tonight. I'm going to sign up, and I'm going to find out where he is so I can see him talk, hear what he has to say. So I did. I went to a Wednesday night gathering, met him, saw him, heard his talk. And the dude was grounded, like Matt was saying, like, when you meet Brian, you can tell his energy goes downward into the ground. There's something about him. It feels really solid. It feels really trustable and all that stuff. So I went there, talked to him. And uh, it was basically like I was convinced right away. I was like, I want to sign up. Whatever, whatever he teaches, I want to learn it. I gave my money. I signed up. I took this uh, workshop called The Experience. An experience workshop is uh, they got you guys standing in front of models, actually doing model work, allowing the models to bring up your insecurities and all these things so you guys can process them in a proper way. And so what it did for me was it exposed me to a lot of things that I didn't realize that I was hiding within myself, a lot of anxiety. I, I knew I had anxiety, but I didn't know I had it that bad. I didn't know I had all these mechanisms built, layered on top of shit to cover up the anxiety all these nervous tics I was doing, all this smiling that I was doing that I thought was really genuine smile, but it really was. And it was just like, I'm nervous. Smile kind of like saved me kind of smile. I didn't realize I had that. And so I uh, took that, that week and that experience and I dropped a lot of that um, as a result of being uh, becoming aware of it. So I remember going back to work that next Monday and I remember just being like, being super fucking aware of all the little nervous tics that I had. And I just stopped doing them. And I got really fucking nervous around people because like, oh shit, I don't have my defenses anymore. I feel super vulnerable and super fucking exposed. And it was, it was weird for a while. But what I also noticed that was that I picked up the skill to really look people in the eyes and really hold eye contact with people. Because one thing you do when you're working with the models, you're really locked in with them. And so when I went to work, I was just locking eyes with everybody. And I started to see it within people. Everybody was fucking nervous. <laughs> like, when, you per when you're nervous yourself, you don't see it because you're always dodging eye contact. But when you stop and you start looking at people in the eye, you start to see all their little qualms and all their little nervous tics and shit that they were doing. And it was, it was fascinating. It was almost like, like, why are they nervous around me? It makes no sense. <laughs> like, I totally, I totally didn't get it. And, um, but what it also did was it, it, I noticed that people would gravitate towards me more. Like, people were talking to me more that whole week. People I hadn't talked to before were just talking to me. And I guess I was part of the whole trustability thing, right? When you're grounded and you're solid, people can feel you and they know you're not really judging them or anything like that, they feel a lot safer around you. So I, that's one of those things I had developed over that weekend. And since I noticed that it was working and all this stuff was changing in my life, I wanted to be around the work even more. So I showed up again. The thing with the experience workshop is if you do the experience workshop, you can come back and you can assist in it for free. And I know some of the guys here have done it. You've done the experience workshop. You showed up for free that they assist in you as well. And you flew out to, uh, you, came, you did yours in Bucharest. Right, so you can go and you can show up in the free, you can sit in the back and you can, you can, you can listen to all the talks. And all these talks, if you go back and listen to them, matter you take the experience workshop, they just keep reinforcing everything that you're learning. So what you didn't catch while you're in the workshop, you're catching it assisting. And so I kept catching new stuff, new stuff, new stuff, and I was putting pieces of this puzzle together. And so my grounding was changing. I was getting way more comfortable with approaching women. Like, mind you, when I came to this workshop, I'd never approached a girl before. I didn't know what that was. I didn't know it was a concept that people were working working towards. It was weird. And I seen a guy do it when we had going out one time at night with these guys. And I remember as he went to go chase this girl down, my stomach was just cringing watching him do it. I was like, oh no. <laughs> I was like, I was like don't, do, don't do it. It was, it was terrible. But uh, it was actually, it was Fabian. And Fabian's, uh, you, you see Fabian, Fabian's got a lot of feeling too. But he's very dramatic. But he also has a lot of courage because he would just, he see a girl and he's go chase her down right away, right away. And I remember seeing it and I remember like, I fucking want that because I'm hell not doing that. And if I had that skill, I'd be doing it a lot more. And so um, doing this work, I took another workshop and I had a, uh, they had given me this assignment, which was basically 90 days of nonstop approaches. I, I have to approach three girls a day for 90 days. And I can't miss a day. And so I committed to that. And the first couple of weeks were fucking rough. Like I was getting rejected. I was getting shot down. 
it just shit just really wasn't working. And I remember just being like, I don't, I don't get what's going, I don't get what's going on. All right. So I talk with Brian about it, and Brian was kind of like, he was telling me, he was like, okay, you gotta, you gotta start allowing yourself to be a little bit more, a little bit more sexual, because I had desires, and I wasn't, and I wasn't honest about my desires when I would approach these girls. And I would do a very nice guy, very indirect, instead of just being very honest, like, hey, I think you're beautiful, or I want your number, or I think you're sexy, or whatever the case was. So he was like, you got to allow yourself to start doing that. And I remember going into a Whole Foods one day, and because I don't always go to Whole Foods because I knew girls were in there, and there were always sexy girls in Whole Foods, and they were always, they were always wearing yoga pants. <laughs> <laughs> and I asked, I, I fucking, I love, you, I love yoga pants, and it's, it's, a, it's such, a, such a thing for me right now still. <laughs> So I went to the, I remember going into the, uh, going into there and I was like, okay, I'm going to tell that girl I like her, the way she listens to yoga pants. And I was so fucking scared. I was nervous. Heart was pounding. So I went down the aisle and I was just like, I saw her in the yoga pants reaching up for something. And I was like, I was going to tell her, but I totally did not. I, I, I freaked out. And I was like, hey, so what's that cereal like? Have you had it before? <laughs> <laughs> Have you had this one right here? <laughs> so I fucking, I fucking freaked out. So I freaked out, took a couple seconds, went around the next aisle, saw another girl in yoga pants and I told her, and she just opened up about it. She was like, oh, thank you. That was like a super, super nice compliment. She received it really well. And that just really shifted the whole, the whole fear of it all to me. I was like, wait, you can get away with that? It's really weird. <laughs> and so it actually started to come, become fun. So every day on my lunch break, I had an hour. I would go to Whole Foods every day for like that whole 90 days straight, pretty much. I, at, every day I had work at least. And um, that, really, that really shifted the whole being able to meet a girl out in the day in public and and may, have something come of it. So I was getting into this, I was, I was meeting girls, I was going for coffee. At first I was really shaky with it. I was still getting the kind of friends on a little bit because I didn't know how to really navigate all that. And like Brian was teaching us how to step into tension, how to create tension. And sometimes I was pushing a little bit too much tension too early sometimes and I would get shut down. And sometimes I wasn't pushing enough tension because I was playing to save. My nice guy wanted to come up. It didn't want to be, it didn't want to be sexual. It didn't want to be intrusive or invasive. And a lot of the times I can see it. I was like, damn, if I had just been a little bit more sexual and taking the, and taking the chance there, I probably would have gotten what I wanted. But I wasn't, and I was playing it very small. And so uh, that was really a big piece of, it, of the whole puzzle for me. Because before that, before I came into Fearless, like I said, I was getting friends on all the time. I, if I meet a girl, it was by chance. She just happened to be into me, and I can see it. It was very obvious. I'm like, okay, cool. Well, she's, you know, she's not, she's not bad looking. And so I'll take her. <laughs> All right, come on, go on. You got a question? Yeah. So if you meet someone, and it's like you kind of need to determine, like, am I gonna friend this girl, or am I gonna try for something else? And it seems like you try for that other thing, and like you can't do both, right? So you kind of need to make that decision early. Well, I mean, you always know what you want. We're just not saying what we want. Like, if you see a beautiful girl and, like, you don't just want to, I mean, I don't know. Rephrase the question. I want to make sure I got it correctly. Uh, well, I have uh, uh, friends that are girls that are, I, I kind of probably won't be able to convert. Uh, but if you, I also have girlfriends that I also, like, can't be friends with now or, you know, just so. It seems like uh, uh, you meet someone and you kind of need to determine from either what they're saying or whatever, like, is this girl going to be open to, um, being a friend, being something more, or and I need to uh, judge myself to what she is open for. I guess maybe answering my question, but that's uh, that's what I have difficulty with. Because sometimes I think like, oh yeah, she she'd be cool to hang out with sometimes. Other times, and you know, just so you gotta you gotta decide what you want ultimately. Like you have to, and you gotta be very clear about that. And then you have and you have to go for it. Because we can't you can't sit around waiting for the girl. You can't wait for her to decide where she wants to be placed. You gotta get what I'm saying. Like you have to take control of that. That's what you want. If you want someone with her, then you gotta let it be known in some shape or fashion, right? Yeah. Like in doing this work, I'm using, I'm way more direct about it. So now I'm just kind of like I don't do the indirect thing, or I don't do it where I'm trying to be I'm trying to be friendly first, and then trying to ease my way into it because that's the way I always used to do it. And that's why I used to always get friends on it. Like yeah, hey, friend, 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 and then one day I'd be like, oh yeah, I actually like you. Three, four, five months down the road. Like where it felt, when it felt safe to say it, and it'd be like, it was already too late, I already missed my chance. So I don't do that anymore. So I, I kind of I kind of set the tone of everything immediately. So it doesn't it doesn't have a chance to really go anywhere else. If, she, if she's not with it and she doesn't want to go that direction, then that's totally fine. I can accept that. But I don't want to I don't want to beat around the bush and not go straight for it. You gotta get what I'm saying? Yeah. So decide what decide what you want from it. And if there's like somebody in your friend circle and you're attracted to her, like let her know. I don't know. Worst case scenario, she's not into it. That's fine. But just don't take it personal if she's not. It's like, hey, I get it. It's cool.
you can go back and be in whatever kind of friends you guys were before. Yeah. That's really easy. So, yeah, push. so like there's beautiful women at Target, Walmart, all these places all the time. Especially Target. Let's say you're down in Marcus Isle, right? And you go up to a woman. Oh, yeah. I do a lot of that stuff too, where I'm like, you know, I mm -hmm. want to say what's on my mind, but then I say, start, oh, so you work down this aisle, or, you, you know, I start. What are some examples of some things that you're actually saying that's, you know, you say, hey, you're sexy, you know, I mean, just yeah. like that, or what are you saying that, that actually gets a response from these women? Yeah, like, I'll literally be like, you're. How are you doing it? It's just, just being super honest. I mean, sometimes, it, sometimes, it, sometimes it's more vulgar. Sometimes it's just like, you want to say her ass looks good in those yoga pants, and sometimes I'll literally say it. But there's other times where I'm also like, like your figure looks really good in those pants. And I was just kind of like, not really thinking about what she's going to say about it because it's, just, it's truly what I feel. And I feel like if I'm going to get rejected, I'm going to get rejected no matter what. So I'm not trying to soften the blow at all. Like, this, let it come out however it's going to come out. You don't worry if you're being too vulgar or not? Like no, no, but I used to. But when I started, I, I did. But what I started to realize over time was that you can say a lot. A lot of what we're doing is that we're trying to forecast, we're trying to forecast her response to you. But you don't know how she's gonna respond. 100%, you don't know. She might take that. She might take that that ass thing. You might be like, "What the fuck? That's so funny. That's so random. Who the fuck says that?" Yeah, right? But she's also at the same time enjoying it while you're saying it, and you're kind of just like, "I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. Like, I hope I didn't offend you." But like, she's clearly not offended, right? So that kind of thing. So a lot of it, like I know Matt talks about it. It's like it's really just keeping your integrity. Because what I know for myself is that if I'm not keeping my integrity, I go in my head and I'm trying to I'm trying to say things in a nice guy way where it's like I don't want to offend you, and then it puts me in my head because it's not truly what I really want to say. All right, so but you can always soften it, like you know, like yeah, your curves are nice and that, but your attention is the pants, and so like be very honest about your intention is the pants. Yeah, you'd be surprised; they're not going to be offended by it. You know, and I'm sure she's a beautiful girl, but that's really what drew you over there. You like curvy girls? That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Embrace it. So um. So back to where I started from, um, extreme nice guy, man. Always, always friend zone, always waiting last minute to tell her I liked her because I was way too scared to ever go for it right off the bat. And um, it, it cost me a lot of women, man. It cost me a ton of girls, at least a ton of girls that I thought were interested at some point until I just kind of held on to it until I thought it was safe enough to do it. Um, and so I never got anywhere, man. And I was ending up with girls that I didn't really like long term. And I would have sex with them. And it was kind of like, yeah, I'm not really digging this girl so much. And I kind of pull away. I didn't know how to really cut those boundaries and be like, yeah, I'm not interested in you. And so I had girls who would just kind of linger for a while. But in return, it would also happen to me, too. I Every now and then, I'd meet a girl I did like. And then I'd have sex with her. And they'd be like, I, she'd let me linger around. And she just really wouldn't respond to my text. She wouldn't meet up, stuff like that. And so that was just really an energy I carried with me as a nice guy. So um, doing this work, a lot of it, I just broke it and just really shifted for the other direction. Like really, really, really swung for the fences. All right, because I wanted the complete opposite of it. I mean, it's, there's a lot of shit. Like I had an eight-year relationship and, I, and that nice guy really just ruined that relationship that I had. I had a relationship with a girl right out of high school that I was just really, just really in love with that girl. It's really like uh, reconnected on so many different levels. It was almost like a twin, really. Like, we had connected so well, but the nice guy, Amy, didn't know how to set boundaries, didn't know how to be very honest about what he wanted, was way too scared to offend her, was way too scared to take risk. And so as a result, I started doing things in the background, like cheating, like lying, um, shit like that. It really just made it impossible for us to ever be friends after the relationship ended. And that's one thing I regretted the most that my nice guy really caused me to do. Can I get what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, that's a lot of the reason I came down to, uh, to, do, to do this work change it and when you guys are shifting and you guys are changing it's where you guys are gonna it's gonna be hard it's gonna be like pulling teeth for some of you guys who have a lot of nice guy when you guys are actually when you guys are actually doing things that are actually counterintuitive of what the nice guy does like setting boundaries and and speaking your truth and speaking in integrity and being like i don't want to settle for i don't want to settle i actually want this and this is what i want and the girl has an objection to it and your part of you is just, just like i don't know how to handle that objection to it I'm like just write it out see where it goes a lot of the times when you guys set boundaries with girls, they don't like it at first, but then they come back around when the relationship is different because you set that boundary for it. And it's never gonna go that way it used to go before you set that boundary. Like I got this story about Dave here. He told me to set a boundary with a girl one time and this girl I used to record music with her. She used to come to my house and she used to sing on the tracks, but she would flirt with me when she was at my house. She'd come, she'd lay with me on my bed. Um, but anytime I ever went for the move to have sex with her or to touch her or anything physically, she would always literally just pull away from me. But we never spoke about it. 
and it would it would always happen. And I noticed it was, it was really getting uh, getting to me because it, it was distracting me from the music. Or at least I was distracting myself from the music. So one day she was at my house and she had done it again. She had laid on my bed. She was flirting with me. She was posing, doing all these sexual poses on the bed. She's being kind of goofy, kind of funny, right? And I was just like, okay, I don't get it. And so I told her, I was like, look, you can't keep doing this. And she was like, what? And I was like, you can't keep coming over here like doing, I was like, like flirting with me and, and doing all this shit. And when I go for it, you just shut me down. And I was like, it's really like distracting me from the music. And um, she got mad. She grabbed her keys and she left. I remember I walked her downstairs to her car. She hopped in the car and she zoomed off. And I remember thinking in my head, I was like, the fuck is Dave talking about? <laughs> like, because... <laughs> Cause, cause my fear at the time was like, this is not, it's not gonna work. If I do this, she's gonna fucking leave, and this is my only chance at, at really having a hot girl. And, uh, and so she fucking left, and I was just kind of upset about it. And I was like, whatever. And uh, sure enough, like a month later, I'm at a hookah bar with, with a friend, and uh, we were where they're smoking, and I get a text from her. And she's like, what are you up to? I was like, I'm hanging out with my friend at a hookah bar. And she's like, okay, well, when my friend gonna come down? And I was like, okay. I hadn't spoken to her in like a month. Thought she was still mad. She shows up just fucking as gorgeous as I've, ever, as I've ever seen her before. Shorter skirt, just really fucking sexy as shit. And she comes and she hangs out. And that night, I pretty much ended up scoring with her, right? And it made no fucking sense as to how it worked. But she just totally flipped the script on me. It's like, even when we're driving back home, she got my hand, she put my hand between her legs. I'm just like, this is so fucking weird. Like, why all of a sudden is this shit happening? And like, it, it was the weirdest thing ever. And that's because that was counter nice guy, right? A nice guy doesn't set boundaries for himself. And like a nice guy mostly just takes what's handed to him, and you know he thinks that's as good as it's gonna get. So yeah, man, that's basically, that's basically what I'm learning in my journey and what I have learned. And I'm still constantly learning, especially being around these guys, especially Matt here. Matt's uh, really good at pushing boundaries, and uh, it's it's really funny because you think about it, we got three coaches here. Matt's the guy who tries the new shit out, and we see Matt doing this new shit that he's doing. He's trying, he's step, he's pushing the boundaries just a little bit more, a little bit further than we're doing it. And we're kind of like, okay, cool, it's safe to go there. <laughs> like, <it's, laughs> especially when Matt was doing this integrity thing where he was just really being honest with the girls. Like, you know, he called a girl a bitch. It, that's really what he felt. And, it, and we'd be like, oh shit, like he did that, <laughs> right? And then you see the other, what's on the other side of it as a result of him doing that. And it's like, oh, uh, cool. So now I got that power now <laughs> and I can, I, I can kind of access that. I mean, we're all doing it to some degree. We're all learning from each other, but definitely Matt, you had a, you had a definitely a huge, a huge point where he was just really trying a bunch of different shit that was really triggering to the most of the average person. And so um, it's really, really powerful being around these guys, man. So if you guys ever do work with us, you guys are going to start seeing that those shifts. It's, it's insane. Like I'm completely a different person than I used to be.